Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Let me put my years of game playing, event organizing, and game night hosting to use for you. Tonight, the question we are going to be answering is what's in the box in regards to this? A hot new game from Lucky Duck Games, part of the new Millennium series for Chronicles of Crime. This is the 1400 box set, so you're solving a crime in medieval times, and I gotta say it looks really cool. Um, I do have to say that Lucky Duck did send me a review copy of this, so just in uh, the idea of full disclosure. Um, what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to open this box up and I'm going to show you what you get in here and you get to hear my thoughts live because I haven't seen what's in this box before. Uh, one caveat, I have not played the original Chronicles of Crime. I'm not much for modern gaming. Um, modern crime investigation doesn't interest me, but checking out stuff as a sleuth in the 1400s, that seems really cool to me. So quickly, I'm just going to go through the back. This is a story driven cooperative game like no other. There are four crimes in here and it does require an app to play. It's the year 1400, and you're Abelard Lavelle, a knight living in Paris. Since you were a child, strange prophecies of dreams of past and future crimes have haunted you. You managed to put your power to good use, solving mysteries that no one else could. Now, thanks to your growing reputation, the people of Paris seek your help. Will you come to their aid? Note, this does require an app to play. The app is free on the App Store and the Google Play Store. So enough about that. Just quickly, just want to note, for those of you watching on YouTube, please... Hit the little eye up here and you can get some more info, links to our webpage and our Patreon project where you can tip the bellhop if you appreciate videos like this. That's about it for self-promotion today. You can head over to tabletopbellhop.com. That's our main webpage for all kinds of other gaming content. We're going to crack into this. All right, so Chronicles of Crime 1400, Lucky Duck Games. Let's see what you get in the box. All right, so we have an introduction rule book here right off the top. Very, very thin not a lot to look at here we'll flip through this quickly oh i love it look at that component list this is the kind of component list i'd love to see in a board game pictures of absolutely everything the only bonus here lucky duck games is it would be awesome if you showed the backs of the cards as well i don't know how much that matters in this particular game but seeing the card backs is always a nice bonus lots of examples lots of color nice dark text on a light background everything looking pretty good here no, it looks solid. We're looking at seven pages only with credits on the back showing the other games that are part of it. So this is the first part of the Millennium series of Chronicles of Crime. These are the other two games. There's going to be 1900 and 2400 coming as well. Next we have a game board. This is thin card. You might have expected something a little thicker from uh, for most board games. Uh, again, I haven't played the Chronicles of Crime series, but this obviously you're going to put your cards out on this. Some, some uh, knights, it looks like, at the bottom. This is two-sided. It gives it a look of a, a folder. So if I was carrying around my zippered folder around, I guess it would be this way. And you'd open it up that way. Ooh, box insert. Plastic box insert. Shiny. I like that. Nice and easy to open, too. That's always nice because some of us like to store our games like this because they're crazy. I keep my games stored flat. All right, what do we got? We got packs of cards and packs of cards. What do we want to show off first? Okay, what I do worry about is spoiling things here. So I don't know if I want to show much more than the top card out of this, but you'll notice there's a whole bunch of QR codes, obviously tied into the app. So without wanting to give too much away, I am not going to flip through all of these. I'll just show off this first one. So here we have the, the first card. So there's a monk, a merchant, and a spy who you can talk to in QR codes to do so. And then on the back, this isn't, I'll show the back of the same card. We have, I apologize, the blue sky isn't going to turn out very well here. We have some artwork and another QR code. Quickly, here's another scene, card scene we have here. So there's a stack of these, fairly thick. Uh, they're a nice card, nice card stock. Looks great to me. Now we have some smaller cards. Again, I don't really want to give much away, so we're just going to look at the top one. So we have the top card here. And it is that dark. I will note that these people in the front are really in shadow. That's not just the, the camera not picking them up. And then we're going to look at the back of that card. It just shows number one and a clue symbol. Again, that's um. there's a lot of blue, and I have my thing set up so it doesn't show blue. Um, again, I'm not going to go through all of these because this is a uh, play-at-once kind of game, and I don't want to give away anything. 
We have a stack of cards here, significant thickness. Looks like you got 20 of them. Uh, box sensor's got some interesting stuff here showing the different clue symbols and stuff. I'm going to put that back on top. Throw that back on top there. Grab the first deck of people cards. Again, I'm going to try to just show up first. There's only 30 here. Thankfully, no blue. Uh, looks like it has a cigarette style pack here. I really dig in the art on this. Like that is, that, those are some, that's a nice artwork right there. You know, I'm going to leave that up while I try to get this open. So we have a significant deck of cards here. Looks like 30 of them. I am not going to show you any individual cards, but here's the card back. And here's one card front where it looks like we have found a doggo. Art is fantastic. Again, without trying to spoil much, I'm going to grab a random card from the middle of the deck here just to show you a random card. So significant deck again. Then we have smaller, I'm going to guess, clue cards instead of people we can talk to. Looks like this might be split into multiple decks. All right, now this is a significant stack of cards. Look at that. That's, that's a nice thick stack. We are looking at a nice thick stack of cards here. 15, 14, 13. So these are color coded, I'm going to guess, probably for each of the different ones. So there's 15 cards in this green stack. So 15 cards in this stack that have that symbol. And then 38 cards in the stack with the hourglass here, or the, the magnifying glass. Now, again, I don't want to spoil much. So I'm going to show you one card of each stack. So we have a book number on it, number one, a star, and another QR code. And I'll show you one of these. Food. We have a card that says food. That seems to be it, unless there's something hidden under this box sensor. What I'm going to do is box these cards so it's easier for me to find next time. I will note, here's a nice bonus, this is definitely leaving enough room for sleeved cards, for those of you who like to sleeve your cards. I know people are going to appreciate that, so thank you, Lucky Duck, for that one. Um... Quick look under the box insert. No, nothing. Some of these puzzle games like to do stuff like that. So there we have it. Um, I have not, again, I have not played a Chronicles of Crime game. So I know it's a lot of like, if you want to interview this person, you scan this QR code type of thing. And then I don't know if these are other people you can interview or suspects and these are the clues or something like that. Really impressed by the artwork. Artwork is fantastic. Card quality is excellent. Um, oh, they're two-sided. There you go. The dog is the dog on both sides. I don't know if that whole deck's like that, but at least the dog is the same on two sides. We're going to grab number one. No, so the dog's special. Maybe you start with the dog. Looks cool. Artwork looks great. Um, theme looks neat. I love the fact that I've got a box insert that's going to hold everything in place. Great for storing your games horizontally. We've got the board for organizing all your cards while you're playing, and a nice thin rule book. I am really looking forward to checking this out. Uh, this might be our Halloween game this year. We'll see. Sorry, I moved some of my mat here. All right. Chronicles of Crime, 1400 Lucky Duck Games. Really looking forward to checking this out. All right, so there you have it. My thoughts on and uh, what you get in Chronicles of Crime, 1400. I got to say what I'm really happy about. One of the things that's really awesome is I don't feel guilty holding this box like this, having already opened everything in here. I've opened up all the packs of cards and everything. This has a great looking box insert with a plastic cover that's going to hold everything in place for those of you monsters who like to store your games this way, instead of this way. I am really looking forward to checking this game out. Component quality is top notch. Mostly cards, a fold out board. I, I admit I would have liked a slightly thicker board, like a board game style board, but it's not a board you're interacting with. You're just putting cards on top of it, so I get it. Plus, if that increased the price, I'd be happier paying less for the game. Looks great. Chronicles of Crime, 1400. I am the Tabletop Bellhop. Again, be sure you, uh, if you're up on YouTube, click the little eye up here. Check out links to our website, tabletopbellhop.com. And please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. For the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, I am Mo Tuzano. Good night and game on.